good evening students how are you all right so today's session is sentences but before we start today's session we will revise what we have done the previous day and uh, the previous day's topic was subject and predicate right so i will give you one activity to do and there are five to six sentences you have to group the subject and predicate of each sentence okay now let's see let me share my screen with you okay can you see my screen all right the first activity which is for 3 minutes you have to group the subject and predicate of each sentence that is you have to write the subject of each sentence in the subject section and the predicate in the predicate section all right okay start now uh, we will check the answer so i have already answered here you will check yours with mine the first sentence rahul drives to his office every day who drives to his office every day rahul right so rahul is the subject drives to his office every day is the predicate go away now if you remember i told you there are sentences where the subject is not clear the subject is not mentioned right so in that case in such sentences we consider you as a subject right and that is why you the word you is also written in brackets because the word is not mentioned in the sentence hmm, in the line so you is the subject here go away is the predicate helen keller inspired many lives who inspired many lives helen keller so helen keller is the subject inspired many lives is the predicate how do you want to spend your vacation now who are you asking this question to you so you is the subject how do want to spend your vacation is the predicate now here you will not be in brackets because you the subject is already mentioned in the line in the sentence shut the door who you again you is not mentioned here you is understood so again we have put you in the bracket you shut the door shut the door is the predicate so have you checked your answers with mine that's great all right now i will read the passage to you listen to me very actively and also refer to the passage carefully every morning hari goes to the market he buys vegetables and fish one day hari asks the green grocer how much is potato per kilo the green grocer replied it is a uh, 40 rupees per kilo the price was quite high that day hari requested but it was less yesterday can you give me 1 kilo of potatoes at 35 rupees please another man who was buying carrots from the same seller laughed at hari and said crazy man the green grocer also refused to reduce the price the people around started laughing an old lady jeered oh my god nowadays we can bargain for vegetables also so from this passage we get to understand the situation and the situation is of a market a uh, hari who's the main character here so there's hari there is a green grocer an old lady a man another man and few people right and what is the situation hari requested the green grocer to reduce the price the green grocer refused to do that people started laughing at hari now how is the situation created or how are you able to understand the situation because you are being able to understand the meaning you got a meaning out of this passage through various expressions and this is only possible when a group of words are put together to give complete meaning 
So if we consider the first sentence, every morning Hari goes to the market. See this particular line has quite a few words and they are put together and they are giving you some meaning that every morning Hari goes to the market, right? So this is known as a sentence. A sentence is a group of words which gives a complete meaning. Every morning, Hari goes to the market. Who goes to the market? Hari goes to the market. Where does Hari go every morning to the market? When does Hari go to the market every morning? So whatever you ask, you get your answer. You get a proper meaning. So remember, a sentence is a group of words put together to give proper, complete meaning. And also, a sentence has a subject and a predicate. That is, a doer of the work and the work itself. So here, from the first sentence, every morning, Hari goes to the market. What is the subject or who is the subject? the doer of the action that is hurry so hurry is the subject every morning goes to the market is the predicate so that is the reason this is a sentence repeating a sentence is a group of words put together to get a complete meaning and it must have a subject and predicate so read the passage once again yourself now try to understand the meaning of the passage and also figure out the subject and predicate of each sentence if possible okay so this will be your assignment don't do it now do it later okay now uh, your second activity let let us do some activity now the second activity is, I have given here a few uh, lines. Let, uh, let me be precise. Lines. You have to identify the sentences and write. And your time is three minutes. Well, let us check. So the answers are, our school is closed now. It is a sentence. But Iron Man is not a sentence. I'll tell you why. Here, our school is closed now is a sentence because, first of all, it is giving a complete meaning. It is giving an information. And from this, you, uh, you get to know that our school is closed now. So you get an information out of it, right? And also, there's a subject and predicate. What is the subject here? Our school is the subject, is closed now, is the predicate. But on the contrary, why Iron Man is not a sentence? It is not a sentence because, yes, it also has a group of words. You are correct, Iron Man. But it does not give you a complete, uh, complete meaning, does it? Iron Man, what is the Iron Man doing? Is he fighting? Is he uh, crying, reading, uh, flying? We don't get any idea out of it, right? And also, this particular expression or line or whatever you say does not have a subject or a predicate. So naturally, it can't be a sentence, okay? Now, what is your plan for tomorrow? So that was another sentence. What is your plan for tomorrow? Lovely weather is not a sentence. Okay, why? Lovely weather. Okay, when? Now, yesterday it was, or I mean, uh, who is saying, who is feeling that it is a lovely weather? Bravo, you won the game. It is expressing something. It is talking about you, right? So, bravo, you won the game. It is a sentence. Lend me your pen, please. It is a request, so that is also a sentence because it is also giving a meaning, a complete meaning. Whereas, interesting game. What is it, the interesting game? Who is playing the interesting game? When is it being played? Nothing is clear. So that is not a sentence, okay? Well, now, what 
can you see here? So there are certain blocks and the blocks were scattered. Now it is scattered. So the, all the blocks are fragmented and scattered and now all the blocks are being put together and it is forming a structure. A phrase or a sentence is just the same. We have groups of words like scattered blocks. When the groups of words are put together to get a complete meaning, like groups of blocks are put together to get a complete structure. Similarly, a, groups of, a group of words put together to get a complete meaning, it is a sentence. So, uh, same way, what is a phrase? Yes, it has a group of words, but it does not have a proper, a complete meaning. So, when the blocks were scattered, you can still see the image. When the blocks are scattered, that is a phrase. And when the blocks are not scattered, are put together and gives a proper structure, it is a sentence. Clear? So what I'm saying, lovely weather, and I don't give you a proper, a complete meaning, it is a phrase. Whereas when I say it is a lovely weather, or it is a lovely weather today, I get you to un I, uh, tell you uh, when it is, or it is a lovely weather today. So also you get a subject and a predicate. Which is the subject here? It is a subject. Is a lovely weather today is the predicate. Very good. Okay. So you've understood it, right? So a phrase is a group of words which does not have a complete meaning or which does not give a complete meaning, does not have a subject or predicate. And a sentence is a group of words put together to get a complete meaning and also has a subject and predicate. Clear to you all? Great. So here, a uh, third activity, which is again for three minutes. Few sentences are there. I'll just make the last few sentences readable. Yeah, so few sentences are there. You have to section them, you have to group them and put in the proper section. You have to identify the phrases, put them in the phrases section, identify the sentences and put them in the sentences section. Like, our school is closed now. So by this time we have understood that this is a sentence, so this is in the sentence section. What is your plan for tomorrow? Bravo, you won the game. So these all are sentences. Lend me your pen, please. Again, these four are sentences. And lovely weather, interesting game are phrases. Because both do not give complete meanings. Clear to you? All right. Now, my name is Clara. So this sentence is declaring something. Now the sentences are of various kinds. Sentences can give information. Sentences can uh, declare something. Sentences, uh, by, uh, through sentences, you can ask something. Uh, you can request something. You can command or uh, suggest somebody something or uh, you can uh, be surprised or wondered. So, there are various kinds of sentences. But here, when I'm saying my name is Clara, I'm declaring something. That means what I'm talking about myself. I'm declaring that my name is Clara. You get to know that my name is Clara. Such sentence is known as declarative sentence because it makes a statement. It declares something. And remember, any declarative sentence or such sentences end with a full stop. With a full stop. So, like I am an Indian. 
who am I? I'm an Indian. I'm informing, I'm declaring, I'm putting a statement that I'm an Indian. Honesty is the best policy. Again, this is a piece of information. I'm giving you a piece of information. Honesty is the best policy. I don't like liars. I'm stating that I don't like liars. I will never attend the show. I'm, I'm informing you that I'll not attend the show. I'll never attend the show. Coronavirus has affected the entire life or the entire human race, entire world. So again, I'm stating something, I'm informing, I'm giving you a piece of information. People of different regions of the world wear different kinds of clothes. So here also, I'm stating something. So these sentences are known as declarative sentences because all these sentences make statements and all these sentences end with full stop. So if you have any question, please ask me. Now, let us uh, play an activity. Identify the declarative sentences from the list. Every cloud has a silver lining. Do you have classes tomorrow? Roma loves Chinese. What is your plan for tomorrow? Bravo, you won the game. What a lovely weather. Lend me your pen, please. Chess is an interesting game. Will Harry meet you? Do exercise every day. How beautifully she has drawn. So, there are, uh, well, I gave these sentences. What you have to do is, you have to identify the declarative sentences from the list. And probably the last sentence which I missed is, how have you been? Okay. So I'm sure by this time you have understood what declarative sentence is and can figure it out also. Okay, uh, just to give you an example, uh, every cloud has a silver lining. Again, I am stating something, okay? Although this is a proverb, but I'm informing you or I'm stating, I am giving you a knowledge. Every cloud has a silver lining and it ends with a full stop. So that's a clue. Okay. So find out the rest and do it now. And your time is two minutes. 